Good morning, fans, Privateer FX. Coming at you on the Tuesday here, November 15th, halfway through November. Uh, not too much movement overnight. We've had some UK numbers earlier this morning. Came out pretty much as expected. Uh, claimant count 3.3 thousand. Average earnings slightly higher, 6%, so it's mildly inflationary, but that's a good inflation, earnings inflation. And then the unemployment rate came out at 3.6, a tenth of a percent higher. No big deal. Um, cable is higher, but that's really a factor of just the dollar weakening uh, in general. Um, sterling itself, we still look to sell this into 120. Um, are we going to get a double top at 118.54? Perhaps. Uh, so that's our first port of interest. Let's see what the price action looks like at 54. Otherwise, we're going to put on a gentle fade into 120. Let's go to U.S. rates, which is the main driver. They're not doing anything, right? So we've seen a low of 81.5, 381.5. Now we're at 86. Yesterday we popped up to 89. This is all um, meaningless, right? Um, you really need to get above. I mean, you got to get it back above four for this to become interesting again, uh, and for the story to change. The story now being that the Fed is going to pivot. Um, non farms in December, the unemployment numbers in December should suck ducks, right? Uh, anyone who reads a newspaper or someone who reads five newspapers, um, professional FX trader uh, would do that, can see that, you know, 10,000 layoffs here, 10,000 layoffs here, 10,000 layoffs here. All tech is laying off. All of crypto is going bankrupt. Um, you know, Bezos is literally, I don't know what he's doing. He's, you know, somehow he came on my RSS feed today saying, oh, don't buy a TV, we're going into recession. That could be a contrary indicator. But, you know, if he thinks that, um, are there going to be pretty, you know, some, some big layoffs at Amazon as well? I don't know about Amazon, but it does look like there's going to be loads of layoffs, so the unemployment rate should go higher. Uh, unemployment claims um, on Thursday should go higher. So let's keep an eye on this. And if that, of course, happens, then the Fed will have an excuse um, to slow down the, the raise in rates. Not to mention the fact that this shit is way overdone, right? Euro at 103 historically is too low. Uh, CAD at 132 is fine. Aussie at 67 is fine. Sterling at 118, too low. Dollar yen at 140, too high. Dollar Swiss, that's a, a separate animal. Let's not even talk about this. But Kiwi at 61 cents, too low. So the dollar in general is just on the low end. A low end, and so if we get a little bit of a macro headwind here, um, you know, Euro could go to 110 quite quickly. Let's look at the chart itself. We're just dicking around. By the way, this Bollinger here is two and a half sigma. Um, I use it for dollar Swiss. I don't use it for the other currencies. This is, I use this to um, sort of hedge my global earnings. Uh, but so just ignore this thing on the other on the other pairs. Uh, here's the 200 day, which is your you know your general bull bear line, 104.31. Uh, we're going to see that today. Eh, I don't know. We have Empire State and PPI uh, in the U.S. today. So PPI will be watched pretty closely to see if it confirms CPI. Empire State Manufacturing, hmm, I guess people will be watching it. Um, PPI is expected out at 0 0.4 today. So let's see where that comes in. The charts aren't giving us much here this morning. Yesterday, Doji in Aussie, and we're through the highs, so Doji is in decision. This is a pretty bullish deal um, through the highs after a perfect Doji, even at the top of the range. doesn't matter. This is just indecision, and whichever way the market goes is 
sort of the easier direction, shall we say. Dollar CAD. Dollar CAD could easily go down to 125, right? I mean, those CAD numbers were smoking. Holy shit. Um, and now U.S. tapping the brakes on rates. Although CAD, you know, BOC is also tapping the rates, but not even a rate story. It's just um, the employment numbers out of Canada were absurdly good. Uh, plus 100,000. Um, how do you like them apples? Cable we talked about. We're going to sell this into 120 just because UK is stuck in the mud. Dollar yen. Uh, we're not doing much with dollar yen. We, you know, we kind of, <laughs> we, we were about 80 pips off on the BOJ intervention and we were about two hours off on the BOJ intervention. Those of you who are watching on Twitter saw that. Um, and we did not play this. Uh, we were busy in dollar Swiss. This move here. And so now, you know, as long as rates stay below four, I think you can sell rallies in dollar yen because dollar yen at 150 is talk, you know, that the sentiment driving that was rates at five. If rates are going to settle at four and the long end might actually settle at three and a half, uh, dollar yen is going to ease back down still, but um, we shall see. Dollar Swiss, oddly, if you were playing both sides of this uh, two and a half standard deviation, you'd have to be buying this shit now. Um, boy, looks offered, right? Just on its ass. Dollar Swiss, there are no trades here. You certainly do not want to sell through these lows. Um, this is well too extended. And this is a comp, this is a, the reason for this is also Euro Swiss is, is getting smacked. Um, which is not great for those of you who are rooting for a global economy turnaround or a geopolitical um, sort of truce. You know, Euro Swiss usually tells that story well before the news can news can tell us. Euro Swiss is telling us things are things have not headwinds have not cleared. Ukraine is nowhere near finished. Um, and there's some troubling shit out there. Euro Swiss at 97.54. Um, and this, of course, is adding to the downside in dollar Swiss. Kiwi, like Aussie, doji making a new high. There are no trades here. Nothing, no five-star trades. Aussie in the uh, Aussie yen, middle of nowhere. Um, Euro sterling. Again, we're watching this level just technically 86.93. It makes no sense, um, but it doesn't have to make sense, right? If it's down there, you, inevitably there's going to be news pushing it there. Um, it's just a level that we can see there's going to be a lot of risk below there. Anyone who's long Euro Sterling for the past eight days, it will take a breath and, and uh, you know, puke that shit out through 93. Euro yen, middle of nowhere, as you can imagine. Sterling yen, same chart. Euro Aussie, which can be a trendy little, little salo. Salo, I believe, means bitch in French, so trendy little bitch. Um, but it isn't really being too trendy right now, so nothing to do there. Swiss yen, <coughs> we never trade this. This is probably a good one to trade on Bollinger Bands because Swiss and yen you know the vol is pretty muted and if this thing goes two and a half sigma although here you probably got caught but this was dollar yen driving that i don't know maybe one someone wants to write a systematic on that um cad swiss again nothing to see here where's oil euro norway oil is back at 85 again sound asleep oil like makes some noise up at 90 then makes some noise down at 80 but really it's just 85 um, which, by the way, is hysterically high for the global um, for the global population, right? This is a shitty number for those who have drive cars, uh, who have to heat homes, who consume plastic, uh, and do all that fossil fuel uh, bullshit. Uh, this is not a good number for the global economy. I would say below seventy five becomes good and really we wanted it at 50 um, but uh, fat chance on 50 dollar Norway just dollar depreciation because of rates 
Euro CAD, no interest, CAD yen. Let's see what the MEX is doing. Any cartel action here? This is just dollar weakness. Surely it's not Mexican strength. Um, is there a level here? Is there anything to do here? Let's drill down on the four hours. <sighs> not really. No real feel for, for dollar max. I haven't traded that in a couple of years. Dollar turkey, um, considering Thanksgiving is, is uh, on the horizon, maybe we should be looking at turkey. Um, I certainly won't be. I don't understand this chart at all. <laughs> but I do know uh, I don't have much faith in the leadership of that country and their finances are fairly upside down. Um, you know, Turkey's not Nigeria basically because of geography is best, my best way to describe it to people who ask me if I have an interest in uh, financial expression in this country. Let's go to the weeklies. Look at that. That's not exactly um, a picture of financial delight, is it? That is in the can. Imagine the inflation in Turkey. Kind of reminds me of Lebanon, that chart. Uh, but that's a story for another day. Gold, still bullish. This is just a rates play. This is this most straightforward rates play you can have. Um, you're a little late to the party here. Uh, we've already put 100 and 140 uh, onto the engines. Probably going to see some uh, respite to the upside around 18, 10, 20. Um, but gold looks like a buy. Crypto is not doing much. Uh, our little Ethereum just sitting tight. It's pretty robust Ethereum. I mean, Ethereum could have easily gone down to 500 with this FTX mess and this whole fucking monkey bullshit, but it didn't. Uh, Solana obviously took a ball kick the most because this was his darling. This was SBF's darling. I don't know if uh, FTX has liqui liquidated all of their Solana or it was stolen. God knows uh, what's going on there. I don't read the news about FTX anymore. I said to someone yesterday, um, the dude stole a fair bit of my money. Not a fair bit, let's not exaggerate. The dude stole, stole my money. I'm not allowing him to steal any more of my time. So I don't even read about FTX anymore. It's just a waste of time. Where's my Matic? 93 cents. You would expect this to be higher. And here's our DYDX, which is a decentralized exchange. This is this is uh, Binance or Kraken um, or Coinbase, but decentralized. There's no single owner. It's owned by the group. It's the best way to describe it for all the people listening to this call who have no idea what crypto actually means. Um, I don't mind this if you want to take a punt in crypto. I mean, Ethereum is your anchor, but... There, this one is your punt, I think. DYDX. Someone's going to have to send me what the front end looks like uh, on DYDX and what the order book is and uh, how easy it is to trade. Because the problem with these decentralized exchanges like Uniswap, you know, they lack the ease of trading of the centralized ones. I mean, one of the things that everyone loved FTX for was you were like, holy fucking shit, this is a trader's website everything was perfect for the professional trader anyway shutting that up shutting that line of uh, communication off as you can see we're not doing anything this morning uh, we're, we're watching cable uh, for a possible fade and we're going to strap in and take a closer look at things 2 30 central european time which is 8 30 eastern for ppi and empire state manufacturing um, that's about it. I mean, 
We do have Aussie numbers in the middle of the night. For those of you who are in Australia, wage price index is important, right? So this is wage inflation. This is coming out in Australia. Uh, this will be in the AM European time. Um, but if you are out far, far east, keep an eye on those Aussie numbers as well coming up. Anyway, I've said enough. Good luck today. Make some dough, people. I will uh, talk to you again sometime soon. Ciao.